Hi, everybody. I'm so sorry for the delay. We have like a, a network thing. Thank you so much for joining us. We will start in like three minutes. We just want to make sure everybody has the new link and then we can start. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you can hear me. If you can hear me, please um, drop a comment in the comment section, please. Thank you. Hello, if you can still hear me, please drop a comment for me in the comment section. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Matilda. Hi, Dami. Thank you so much. Good evening, everybody. I'm so sorry for the break. Like I said, we had a little issue with the network and the link, so... <laughs> but that's fine now. Thank you so much for joining us. How's our weekend going? How's everything going? Thank you so, so much for joining us. It's great to have you here. Please let me know how your weekend has been. How is it going? How's your business going? In the comment section, I like to read comments. Please let me know. Fine, fine. Hello. Okay, IG says she's experiencing slow sales. Dami says she's fine. Thank you so much. Wow, I'm so sorry about that. It's, I think it's general. It's a Nigeria thing. Like, it has just been <laughs> fantastic. I'm putting that in a sarcastic manner. So again, thank you so much for joining us. We are a little late, so I'm just going to jump right into it. First of all, um, I have a very small exercise for everybody. When you hear the word community, community, just outside of even, even business, when you hear the word community, what does it mean?
Okay, I'm getting a lot of interesting responses. Group of people, same crowd. Okay, that's fine. I think all of those things actually work. So to officially start, I'm going to introduce myself. Oh, my camera is not even on. All right. Hello, everybody. Can you see my face? Yeah. Good evening, everybody. My name is Bolanle. I'm the community manager for Bumper. I'm so shy. I don't want to turn on my camera. Okay. Thank you for joining us. It is a pleasure to have you here this evening. So I will turn off my camera in a bit. I'm a little shy, but I'm happy to have everybody here. As you can see from how I'm smiling. Um, this is a very interesting webinar that we've been planning for a minute, and I hope it can be as interactive as possible. I would like to, I'm reading the comments here, and I want to keep reading them as we go on. So I'm going to share my screen right away. Let me know if you can see it. Sorry, one Okay, can everybody see my screen? Please let me know. Okay, thank you so much for joining us this evening. We'll be talking through how to build an online community for your business. I will be the only one speaking this evening. Um, we have Matilda out from, she's the CEO of CEO. She's the CEO of Reshape Me, Reshape Me NG. I don't know if anybody, of course, you would have seen it, but I don't want to talk too much about that. Uh, she'll be coming on very shortly to talk about our online business, how she has built a community, how it's working for her, things that um, regular business owners can use. And if I may add, she has a hundred thousand people in her, on her Instagram community just one person so i'm very excited i'm going to be taking down tips and i hope you will be too so first of all i'm going to take us through the basics of community some things you should know before she talks to us um and we're all here courtesy of bumper bumper is your business best friend it is everything you need to run your business digitally it is the reason why we're here today bumper enables you access multiple platforms record orders um you get a free website on bumper you can message your customers you can do so many things you can see how your business is performing at every point in time on bumper so part of building an online community is synthesizing everything and this is something that we're very passionate about on i mean at bumper because we believe business should always be easy for you everything should flow and that is why it should all come together so at the moment you can record orders from multiple sales channels on bumper but we're planning to take it even further i'll talk about that later don't let me say everything now so first of all, I'm going to be talking about community. Community, by definition, is a condition, a mindset of sharing certain attitudes and interests in common. It's just a spirit of togetherness, just like I ask people to say. It means a spirit of togetherness, like people are, they have a common goal, shared interests and values. 
So what's the importance of a business community, what it can do for you? There are so many things. I'm going to run through them very fast. Um, there are so many things a business community can do for you. But top of mind is, first of all, it keeps you in business. You are a, you are a seller. You are a business owner. You are selling products. Your business community will keep you in business. They are the people who will buy your products. They will also represent your brand. They will help you get new customers through word of mouth, depending on how you communicate with your community community. They can inspire confidence in your business. Like you know you have your own family. Like we have you guys. We have the bumper family. So we are confident. And they can also serve as a source of first-hand feedback. If you need to um, carry out a research on something, maybe a new business line, you want to know what, if you're a fashion entrepreneur, if you want to know what people are wearing, you don't have to go so far. You can just talk to your community. Oh, guys, what's happening now? What would you like to see? Things like that. And it's very useful for everybody. Important things to know when setting up a business community. First of all, you have to define your core values. Like what does my business stand for? What do I want to represent? What, what is it? You have to start with your team members, the people on your team who make your business, who, who help you in your business operations. That's your, maybe your sales girl, the people who help you run different parts of your business. You have to start with them. If they don't feel a sense of togetherness, it will not fly on a larger scale. You have to give it time. You have to stay consistent. It's not the first day you set up your business that you will have like a thousand people talking about it. It takes time. It takes effort and you have to be consistent. You also have to provide value outside of your business. I don't think I want to like join any business community and just be seeing things about that business like every day, buy this, buy that from here. I want to see other things that you can offer me. Maybe useful tips, um, information, just funny content, greetings, like um, tomorrow is Mother's Day now. I would like to see, I would like in my community for, for us to celebrate Mother's Day, be it by graphics or just talking about it. That's providing value outside of your business. And number five is to humanize your brand. This is something that a lot of people do not recognize yet. They've, you can, Humanize your brand by, how do I put it now? You show the people behind the brand. You don't just put flyers, don't just put adverts. You show that there's, there are actually human beings behind this brand. It's not a computer that is running into it. And this will enable people to relate with you, relate with your brand. They will follow you. They will feel invested. So um, let me just quickly run through the rest. What your community needs from you. And this is something that we, we use at Bumper. I'm the community manager. So the three things that I think are very vital when building any community, what a community wants from you is communication. They want information about your business, everything that is going on. At any point in time, someone in your community should be able to tell you what is happening at this point in time and what is what is about to happen. Like just keep them, keep them informed constantly, constantly. It could be through content, through emails, keep them informed. They want your support. They want to know if they have any problems, they can come back to you and you will not ignore them. Many people ignore DMs because they're like, ah, these people are just disturbing me. That is not how to build a good community. Also, they want engagement. Engagement, they want, this is um, content. Like they just want to keep coming back. They want to be engaged. They want to see that, oh, this is actually, there's a human being running this brand. They want to know, like, they are curious. You have to satisfy their curiosity through engagement. And you can do that through meaningful content. Okay, so final steps to take in building the community. Like, um, this means today now, if I set up a business and I want to build a community, these are the things that I have to do. Like the steps, you always have to have a plan for everything that you do so it doesn't fall through. So if you want to build a community now, the first thing you do is to identify your target audience. And you can already do that when you identify the target audience for your business. So those same people, you identify them, then you define the goal of the community. What do I, what do I want the com what what do I want from this community? Like, do I want do I want it to be majorly feedback or do I want it to be like a support channel? What exactly do I want from? Because there are multiple platforms and you have to know which one serves which which purpose. And the third point is to select the platform you want to use. We have so many. If you check our 
Instagram, our social media pages currently, we've been highlighting um, useful social media apps that people can use to run their business. And not everybody can, can optimize all of these apps. You have to pick the one that, that works best for you, the one you can manage as a small business. Once you get bigger, you think of expanding and channeling into different places, but it's important not to burn yourself out, avoid burnout, pick your strengths. And I personally, I recommend Instagram because Instagram is so easy to use. There are so many things you can do on Instagram. Like it's so engaging. You can post videos, you can post pictures, you can ask people questions, you can do so many things. Then the fourth thing is to actually start the community. Then number five is to determine the modes of communication. How do you want to communicate? And this you would have already highlighted when you selected your platform. So after picking the platform, for a platform like Instagram, modes of communication, maybe Instagram reels, maybe flashcards, things like that. But if you're going to use a WhatsApp community, then you should be thinking of text text and also like um, how to start conversations, maybe collect all of their emails and send them mails, keep them constantly updated. Then number six, you have to go back from time to time and know if your methods are working or you need to channel your energy into something else. Um, thank you so much for listening to me. I'm going to let Matilda come up now. She's more experienced than I am. And she's the founder of Reshape Me, a fitness store created to provide solution to the pain point of millions of women in this country. And I don't even think I need to say, like, <laughs> first of all, if you have a waist trainer, say hello in the comment section. I can show you my own waist trainer now. We all wear it. <laughs> so I'm definitely Matilda's target audience. I wear a waist trainer. I haven't had any child yet, but I know I will need to buy like five when I have my children. So Reshape Me was founded in 2018 and she has grown a customer base from the ground up to 100,000 people. And she wants to do more. She's not stopping there. So we're going to let her talk to us about how she has done this and just let's let's take notes, guys. Thank you so much. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Hi, Matilda. Hi, hi, Bonali. Thank you so much for joining us. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Please, can, you, can you turn on your video? I did, but I cannot start my video because the host has disabled it. Oh, I'll fix that now. But please, please go on. Can you share your screen? Are you sharing screen? I'm not sharing on the screen. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. Just take the floor. I'll turn on the video very soon. Okay. Hi. Hi, everyone. Thank you for signing up. My name is Matilda Award. I'm the owner of Reshape Me Nigeria, the person behind Reshape Me Nigeria. Thank you, Shay my Thank you for welcoming me. And while I wait for Bonali to fix the video issue, I think I'll go on to introduce myself. <laughs> Hi, Sarah. Yes, my name is Matilda, CEO, mom of five. And um, I started my business officially in 2018, which shaped me, became a brand name in 2018. And I started it because from my own personal pain points, from my own personal problem, which was to get my body back after baby. And you can say Reshape Me is uh, a solution provider. I think which is like the best way to start a business, find something, provide solutions. And I didn't just want to be just an ordinary waist trainer brand. I just wanted to, I wanted to stand out. I wanted to be different. I wanted to like, when somebody looks at Reshape Me and they're like, this is different. Okay, so my waist trainer was to, the goal of the waist trainer was to not only take in your belly or anything, just to help with back support, act as a lumbar corset, boost your metabolism and everything, things that others can't do. And I had to make it myself. I wanted it to be handmade. In high waist trainer handmade in Nigeria, that's something that people didn't think was possible, but I went beyond that and I made it possible. And I made it possible. And that's what make, made it different, to be honest. The handmade, made it, making it handmade made it different. And I went beyond that. I went beyond just making it. I went as far as trademarking the brand, 
getting a patent design. As it stands now, you cannot um, use my design. You cannot replicate my waste trainer without me suing you. That's how far I went to protect this business. And I always tell my gang members, like I call them, it's not just about the money for me. I genuinely want to see women get back in shape. I genuinely want to see women be happy. I genuinely want to see women stop being afraid of, you know, of getting pregnant because they're afraid of what will happen to their body when everything is over. So I, I know that the weight loss and fitness industry is broad. It is really, really broad. So I... Cabbage, um, from my own personal experience, I'm somebody that a pregnancy childbirth is something that is that's natural to me. So I'm able to relate to these women. I'm able to relate to how they feel. So it was easier for me to build my brand from there. I didn't focus on the men or slave things or anything. I started with them first because I could share relatable contents that they could like know that I know what I'm talking about. I'm not just talking from from in, from inexperience. So I started with that niche and I was like the brand ambassador for my brand for over four years. I just started using ambassadors last year. I shared relatable content. I advertised where I know my niche would be. That's on blogs, mommy pages, and not just any blog, like specific blogs. I know that there are more women. I went on TV. I did radio adverts. I did billboards and all that just to like reach out. Um, has business been easy in Nigeria? No, it hasn't been easy in Nigeria, but we're winging it. We're winging it. We had our we have our challenges, but so far so good. We've, we've done well. And if you're just coming in, my name is Matilda, and I'm loyal. I'm resilient. Um, let's say I'm I'm just a happy person. I'm goofy. I I don't like stress. <laughs> I don't like stress at all. And I don't compare, like I don't sit down and go to other pages to say, oh, what are they doing differently? I actually don't care. I just do my own thing the way I want to do it and just move on because comparison steals joy. You know, you don't know how hard you're working until you go somewhere else and you start comparing your results and all that and you just give up. So no matter what, I'm not able to give, I'm, I can't give up on this business, which takes me is registered. And today the topic is how to build an online community. For me, I would say you can't build an online community if you're not taking your business as a business in the first place. Firstly, you have to make sure that you're registered because if Instagram takes down your account for any reason, you actually need that TAC certificate to be able to get back your account. And I'm also a typical example of, um, you can be passionate about something, but don't like it. What do you mean by this? I don't like sewing. I hate sewing, but I have a passion to make my own waist trainers. So I went ahead to find people who like sewing and outsourced it. So sometimes you might be sitting on an idea that's going to be great for your business, but because you want to do everything yourself, you end up burning out. You can't even do it. Imagine having to, imagine if as I am now, I have to sew my waist trainers, I have to attend to DMs, I have to go to the park. I'll burn out. I won't even be able to read anything because I can't do all at once. So my advice to every business owners, if you can outsource it, you don't have to um, do everything yourself. You can't be everything all in one. I mean, I have five kids. I wouldn't have even been able to do it. So if you know that thing you want to do, and maybe you don't, you're not going, you're not sure how you want to do it, or you know people who can do it for you because you know how to push it, you know how to drive that market, drive the market for it, then find someone who can do it, pay them for it, and push what you have to push. That's what I would like. This, I'm sure we all we're all seeing. The dogu bitters everywhere. I went ahead to check out, check, read up on it, and I realized that Obi Kubanda doesn't even own a distillery, like he doesn't own a factory, but someone else is doing it for him. Okay, he's making money from that without even having to even know or having to be a chemist or know how to knowing how to mix a drink. So if you're a business owner here and you know what you can do, better be a private labeling wholesale to just drive sales. Please do it and don't just think you can. You can um, do everything on your own. That's about me. Hi, Bolanli. Are you still on? Yes, Matilda. Thank you so much. So what I want you to do now is just to give us um, a step-by-step -step guide for somebody who wants to 
start a community now let's take instagram instagram i think is like um putting your best foot forward so what's the first thing that they should do on instagram um, first, of all, first of all um let me start from like what is a community you know we're saying this build a community build a community so a brand what does a community mean to a brand for me i feel like a community is something your audience feels part of it's so much more that being a one-time customer or a disengaged follower. For me, community is about shared interest and meaningful connections. Then having a thriving community isn't just about driving sales and having customer loyalty. You must be attuned to what your audience wants at every time. Creating an Instagram community for your business, for my business, has been one of the best ways to gain brand loyalty, to boost my engagement and stay connected to my customers. In fact, I would say building an Instagram community, it's one of the most valuable moves that any brand can make if, you're, if your goal is long-term success. And in a community, Community-oriented brands can become so much more than just the value of their products. Like for me now, I'm much more than my Wix Kidnapper works. You know, I'm an expression of identity. What do I mean? I mean, members of my community are proud to show their love and appreciation, defend the brand if need be, and do everything like to make sure that the brand is out there. A lot of people like a good success stories. A lot of people like to be part of your success. So. A community goes as well. If anywhere your name is mentioned or anywhere they see your services are needed, you would be mentioned. That's why I always tell people, to me, I feel the best form of marketing is referral marketing. The, I call it the pyramid marketing. You know, one customer, to me, I always see one customer. Everybody sees one customer, I see five, because I know that one customer can bring in five and the five will bring in another five, and that's how you grow. And when you make these people feel loved, make them feel appreciated, I call my own community, I call them the Reshape Me gang members. When they reciprocate by sending me a review, which I go ahead to ask for, I don't just assume that because you bought a product, you should give me a review. I actually beg for it, even till now. I still tell them, please, your review will be appreciated. So when they send it and I put them on my page, I hype them, like, I hype them so well that they are so glad, like, I'm doing that. I don't just make it, oh, thank you for, no, I hype them, I make them feel good. And such a person seeing themselves there would always want to, send you more progress reports without even you asking again. I go as far as asking them via the leaflets that comes in our parcel and everything. So the community, it's like building that kind of community. You can just relax and, and know that your brand is out there, but you cannot actually gain that kind of trust and support if you don't give value, if you don't have valuable products, if you sell trash or you don't know what you're selling, nobody will want to to go back, come back to you, or even refer someone to you. And to me, I feel like um, the com a community takes a brand from being a provider of products and services to a personal alignment of lifestyle and ideas. And you shouldn't be too salesy. Like when I mean personal alignment of lifestyle and ideas, people know who I am. I always say I'm Matilda, mom of five. Once they were bringing my kids there so that they get to see, oh, these are the kids. And I share things that I know that um, moms can relate to or people can relate to without actually being too salesy. You don't always have to sell all the time. Give free tips, okay? And then you see people will share that tips, people will share that thing, and that's how people will keep coming. And back to your question, how did I, myself, Matilda, do it? I will give you seven points. Yes, I'll give you seven points which I personally used and I think it's going to be of benefit to everyone here. And the number one for me is to make it personal. The best way to start a community is to make your brand personal. This is the first step to creating a strong community. I mean, it's common knowledge that every Instagram account is owned by somebody. A machine cannot create an Instagram account. There's a human being behind every Instagram account or every Instagram business. So when you remove the anonymity and share the face or the faces behind the brand, this can help create a deeper more and more emotional connection between you and your followers. 
you can interact with them as you would your customers in real life. That's what I mean, like making it personal. When you're writing your captions, when you're writing something in your story, how would you talk to that person if the person was just in front of you? Storytelling comes in handy as well sometimes. So you don't just write available now, 5,000. It's not, maybe sometimes you can create a scenario, put, if, let people, if you're selling clothes, for an example, you make people want to see themselves in that clothes. You can create a, um, how do you, uh, imagine wearing this to a date night, imagine those kind of things. People buy through emotions, people buy through imaginations. So you have to create it most of the time. And making it personal to your own self too as well. Like for me, I made it personal. I showed myself, I showed behind the scenes. I, when I want something, I ask them who can recommend. I do everything to make them know that I'm here. I'm like just everyone else. When I went through, they went, they've gone through one pregnancy with me. They went through the whole journey. They saw the results. They saw me work for it and everything. And people could relate to that. Okay. Another way to make it um, personal is to provide value, targeted, targeted content. Okay. Share things that can help support or entertain your followers. Often with no direct, direct sales incentive. Like all through the month of March, we shape me held four um, live videos every Friday in March. And these live videos, we have, I mean, I could have taken it to YouTube and gained money from it, but no, at that point, I wanted to create, um, I created workouts, which can also stand as customer support to help people know that, okay, why are you taking my product? This is what I want you to be doing. This is what you can do. I divided into different parts. And on the last day, which was yesterday, I dedicated it to moms. And I didn't just advertise it on my page. I didn't just put it out there on my page. I, need, I know that my page is filled with single, married, moms, non-moms, men, women. So I went as far as sending uh, my flyer. I didn't even send a flyer. I made a short um, video of one of the exercises and I sent it to all the mom pages out there. And inviting Jeff followers, which I know that that's where my customers are, and telling them that there's a live video at so, so, so time the next day. I advertised the day to the event. So that's me giving free tips. And I've had a lot of people come to the DM saying, oh, I did this thing you recommended. I did this you recommended, and it's been wonderful. And such a person is going to be happy. And then when it works for her, she's going to send out a video to someone else and they're going to say, okay, what's this brand about? They're going to go through the page and they're going to see, okay, I want to be associated with this. And that's how they come in. That's how they come in. And number two is champion your brand values. Okay, know what your brand stands for. I always tell people what you um, portray out there is what people will call you and what people will see you as. Like Bolanle, meeting you, if I meet you now, you tell me your name is Bolanle or you meet me, my tell my name is Tilly. That is what you're going to call me. You're not going to call me any other thing, but that is what you're going to call me. So me putting it out there that my whiskey napper, I gave it a different name, the whiskey napper is the best, is this, is handmade, it's the godfather of always trainers. And this is me telling people what I want them to see my brand as. And my and knowing that I always tell them, if it's not like being loyal, man, being transparent, being honest in business is my number one value. And I go as far as showing this. Okay, I had a sales. Um, in December, and while I was still delivering, I could have as well been collecting more orders, but I didn't. I told them I'm not going to take any more orders until I'm sure that everybody who patronized me during this though has gotten their order. You know, so it made people realize, okay, this brand is not just about the money. I always tell them it's not about the money because my wish trainers are quite, quite affordable because I had everybody in mind. I want um, everybody to be able to afford it. The students, the housewives, the non-working people, with your little savings, you can still buy something from me. So they know that I give value, I, like if it's for value, I, my products are valuable, but I don't, you don't have to break your, the bank for it. So I'm very clear about what my brand stands for. And being that clear, I attracted, I attracted like-minded audience, okay, who share the same brand, um, to share my brand mission. But my mission of um, Mission of Reshape Me is to, you know, make women who are confident, make men confident, even after childbirth, fit into their old clothes, fit into that skinny jeans. And I put this out there, I'll be like, oh, who wants to wear cropped up with me? I can't wear the cropped up alone. So a lot of people who want to feel good about themselves. And I put it out there. And people who want to feel good about themselves can, that can relate to what I'm saying come to me. So I said number two was championing your brand values. So let's move on to number three. And to make it quick, I'm not taking much of your time. 
when you build that community or you're trying to build that community, you have to, number three is um, listen to your audience. I mean, you're trying to build a community, you're going far out there, you're signing influencers, you're advertising everywhere. And these people come into your page and you know they comment, they send you DMs, you don't say anything, you don't um, respond. It's just as if, the person, it's like going to a closed shop. That's how I see that. It's like you go to a shop and you stand and you're talking to the door. Of course, I won't come back again. You understand? It's like coming to a shop, even if the shop is open and you imagine entering a, a supermarket and nobody is even looking at you. You come to pay, nobody's attending, like nobody's even saying anything to you. Uh, you're asking, hello, hello, nobody's saying anything. Of course, you take your money elsewhere. So listen to your audience is a strong key factor to building your community. Don't just be sharing your own story because engagement, whether we like it or not, is a two-way street. Engagement is a two-way street. You have to create opportunities where your audience feel like they are part of your brand or their opinions are valued. Maybe before a product launch or you need your opinion, do you like, me? Like, yeah, sometimes I feel like, to what color should we bring in? Do you like the blue? Do you like the black? Let them feel like, hey, this person needs me. I, I am part of their groups. Um, you respond to comments, like I said, in a very thoughtful way. It's a very, very important to show your followers that you are listening and you appreciate their input. It's very important because nobody will keep talking. If I'm talking to you and not speaking back, I'll just leave. Nobody likes that. So if you let us know, okay, the little community that you, is not going to just come at once. It's not going to come in overnight. It's not an overnight success. So, when I come to a comment session and I see you've responded to some people that have dropped their own opinion, I'll be willing to drop my own. That's how engagement starts. You might not respond to everybody at once or you cannot respond to everybody due to Instagram to avoid your account getting hacked or getting to see good, but the little you've responded to or the people you saw, I saw you responded to means that I know that you're there and you're reading it because I wouldn't want to drop an opinion when you're not even checking to read what you asked. So the number four is to develop um, UGC. What is UGC? UGC is um, user-generated content. User-generated content makes people who, like, people who are not like um, celebrities or anything, just normal people see their own, the same people that are using the product, real life people using the product, want to be part of it because they are just, it's obvious that it's honest. They bought this product with their money, and they are using it this way. I did a user generated content, like um, I do user generated content. I call it reviews, just like keeping dropping reviews. Those are user generated content. That's why I said you can't just be an island. We can't just be seeing the product. Okay, you're selling to the people. Who are the people you are selling to? You're writing so that, okay, where are the people that bought the things? So that's why you must always ask for a review. Okay, and make sure you have their permission before you post. If they don't send it to you, don't just go to your page and lift it up. You have to ask them, you have to beg them. So I have a lot of people that tell me, okay, till you post, but don't show my face or show my face. Some people go as far as tagging me and by themselves. That's user-generated content. So it makes you more um, trustworthy. People can really trust the brand and be like, okay, okay, she delivers. I mean, scammers are out there. So everybody is afraid. But if they see you just see on your page, they're able to, you know, be comfortable to purchase from you. And to me, you just see is a brilliant way as it allows um, specific community members feel like VIPs, you know? So when I did the work, um, I did the work waste challenge in 2020 during the lockdown. Yes, during the lockdown. And a lot of people participated, although there was a prize attached to it, but that was the users generating their content, sending me their pictures. Oh, I'm, I'm doing this is day five for me. This is this. And I was posting that on my page. And when the results came in, I, I, I put a price on it. It was a challenge for 10 days and I put a price, a price for it. I selected like 30 people and their results came in. Those 30 people gave me a lot of boosts because everybody, everybody that was, everybody like paused and was waiting to see, okay, let us see what this 30 people would give us. And when their results came in and it was mind blowing, I didn't have to talk much again. Like you don't have to now beg or say anything because they have seen it live. They saw these people when they started, they are seeing them 10 days later. So there's nothing else you can say. That's the only conviction they needed to, you know, push the brand. Okay, and you just see um, brands like um, Rihanna, um, Rihanna, I think that's the only brand that comes to my head now. They do it a lot. Rihanna uses everybody for her, Fenty. So any, no matter your body size, 
okay, we can, you can want to, but you can wear fancy, the, 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 the lingerie line, you can wear it. She uses the plus size, the slim, um, the people with disabilities, a different race, different color. So that's you just say, when you come there, what I mean, you just see, you come to the, when somebody comes to your brand, you should be able to see, um, identify somebody like them, you know, and be like, okay, she attends to everybody. They're not, they're not, um, they don't um, do preferential treatment here. So that is it. Number four, develop a user generated content. And um, number five is, what, how will I put number five? I think number five is actually very important. And I'll put it this way. I'll say create or build on, you're not an island, like I always say. You with building relationships, you broaden your horizon, reach and grow your community by partnering with like-minded brands or brands whose followers are your target audience. Like now, I whatever I did, like this um, webinar now with Bumper, it is me building my relationship with them. I came on this webinar and knowing fully well that 90% of signees or people that will sign up for it are women. Whether we like it or not, most businesses online are run by women. So now being here, a lot of people you by that may have no know me before, now know the brand, we shape me. Do you understand? That's what I mean by partnering with like-minded brands. Knowing fully well that Bumper has people that need my services, I came on this. So, and that's why giving you the tips, I'm also promoting myself. Hopefully, um, Bonali. If this is a video issue, then I come up and you get to see my face. <laughs> you get to see my face. And you can also partner and with your like-minded brands by exchanging shout-outs. For example, now I sell waist trainers and weight loss products. Somebody else sells just, um, let's say, breastfeeding um, milk cookies or lactation cookies or something. I can partner, I can go to their page and like, comment there, show up send them DMs, try to create a relationship with the person behind that page. And once in a while, maybe go and meet and say, okay, I want to do a giveaway to your followers. Let them, let them, I want to buy for 10 people. You know, those kind of things. The brand will put you out there. It's, you are doing it for free, kind of. She's not going to charge you for it. The same way she can come to you and say, okay, I need to give out this, this, this to your followers. And you do it. So you, both of you are just giving each other shout outs. Shout outs still remain like one of the best ways to grow on Instagram, if, um, to grow organically, as I say on Instagram. Um, one minute, to... Silly, hi. You can turn on your video. Okay. Yay, thank you so much. Hi. Okay, um, back to what I was saying, um, to create or build relationships. You can create or build relationships as well by using influencers. Influencer marketing is actually a good way to create or build relationships because most people would want to buy from you because they saw this person is using your product or that, that person is using your product. You understand? So, but make sure it's organic, okay? Make sure that if you're using an influencer, make sure it's organic. And you have an influencer that's, the people in your community can resonate with. I, I mean, I have no business using some kind of influencers because they don't understand what my brand is about. So it's not just about paying an influencer with millions of followers. With it convert, you have to make sure that you make your research to make sure that it's going to convert before you use them. So for starters, before you even start spending money on influencer marketing, you should like make your business make your business ready enough to receive whoever that is coming, okay? Because if I even if you pay four million to an influencer and if your page is not it's not um, salesy, like I can't even I don't understand what you're doing. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know whether you're selling. I don't know what you're selling actually. I wouldn't want to spend my money there. Or I come to your page and um, I see that the last time you posted was in January. I'll be like, ah, uh -uh, and why in March? Where have you been? and you're marketing with an influencer, I wouldn't want to pay you or send you money because I don't know if that's how you'd also keep mute with my money from January till March, okay? So number five is create or build relationship. So any way you can, 
building relationships would help cross promote your brand, help you reach a broader audience, help you take those people's followers as well and bring them to your audience. Then the sixth point is to create, find ways to create or give back to your followers. You can't, you don't necessarily need to break the bank. Okay? Let them know that you appreciate your effort. This can be through loyalty programs, discounts, um, giveaways. Okay, let them know that oh, I'm here. I see what you're doing. I'm appreciative of your engagement. I'm appreciative of everything you've done for this brand so far. So take this, take this. You know, you can choose to support a social event or something or in, come to your page and say, okay, this I'm doing this for all of us. I'm, I'm supporting this social and so event or I'm supporting this um, social work or philanthropy work with through the money you've all paid me in the past. Through, through your money, I'm being able to, I'm able to like, do something here. So when you do this, the community feels, they feel loved. They feel like you're seeing them. They feel like you know them. They feel like, okay, our money is being put to good use. It's not just to, you know, for personal use. So when you give back as well, once in a while, it's not going to, it doesn't necessarily have to be con like a, a constant thing, but do as much as you can. Mon it's not necessarily money. You can give a product. It, it's not even, it doesn't even have to be public as well. You know, sometimes you're entering your DMs, you see that customer who um, is, like most times, like the person in my DM, she does it like my admin. She would be like, oh, my this person has bought so, so, and so, so, so. She's been buying every day for the past, um, um, every month. For like three months now, she wants to buy it like that again. What should we do? I'll be like, okay, uh -huh. she has one free product from me. This kind of people, they, they feel like, oh, so you notice that I've been spending my money like this. It's not it's not a public giveaway, but it's me telling her thank you for your purchase so far. And you can also like give free gifts when you're selling. You can put free gifts in a parcel to tell them thank you. It's Sometimes it's, it's not even, it's inexpensive. It might even be ordinary pen, but people would want to actually know, okay, yes, this brand values me. And it might just be a pen, but the, the way they react to it to make you realize that, oh yes, people actually appreciate a gift. It's a gift. So a gift is a gift. So number seven, and sorry, let me go back to what I was saying um, to the other point. No matter what you, whatever giveaways or whatever you're doing, always make sure that you're, your, your community's needs are at the forefront of your, whatever strategy you choose, whether I give away loyalty programs, discounts, whatever you're doing, always put your brand and your and the people first. Then the seventh one is stay consistent. Stay consistent. It's tiring. Business is tiring sometimes. Sometimes you want to give up. Sometimes you're just tired. But you, don't, you can't just give up because if you're passionate about this, some days the sales will be slow. Some days it's going to blow your mind. But because you're running on passion and you really want to see people you know, feel good about themselves or look good if you're a fashion brand or anything, then you will just, you can scale through that. But if you give up, people will give up too on you. So always be consistent. All these points will not count if you're not consistent. All these points will not count if you're not consistent. So stay consistent on Whatever you choose to do, stay consistent with your brand. Secure your brand. Secure your brand name. If it's really important to you, having a brand and not um, securing the name is like giving back to a baby and not giving the baby a name. You know, so you have to make sure that you're protected at all around, so that when opportunities come up that you can take that will need you to bring in your certification, you don't have to say, "Um, wait, let me go and always be ready at all times." Um, I think that will be all for now. That's my seven points. I'll run through them again. Number one is to, what did I say number one was again, is to um, make it personal. Yes, humanize your brand. Number two is to, um, number two is to champion your brand values. Like tell us about your core values, make it personal, tell us your core values. Number three is to listen to your audience. Number four is to develop UGC user, that's user-generated content. Number five is to create or build relationships with other brands like or influencers. And number six is to find creative ways to give back to your community. And number seven is to stay consistent. Thank you so much, Matilda. This was, in fact, I've been taking notes in the morning. Thank you so much for sharing with us. I really appreciate this. Um,
we are almost at the end of our time. So we're just going to take like three questions, three quick questions from people. So if you want to um, ask a question, please raise your hands or drop it in the chat box. We're taking three quick questions. Okay, Sarah has a question, please ask. Hi, Matilda. Thank you so much for that amazing session. It was really, really enlightening. As a business owner, so many valid, valid points that I've been able to take out. So thank you very much. Okay, so my question, okay. My question is very simple and it's, um, so because you mentioned that on some days um, you, oh, sorry, I have to question, but ask it in one. On some days you like the sales a lot, on some days you still that know a lot and one of the things that um we've noticed also bumper and myself is what do you do on those days that the sales are low what are the like active steps and actionable things that you do practical steps that you do so that you don't give up because you know like you said if you give up people give up on you so what are the exact so can you give us like a two pointer or two exact tips that you do on those days that sales are very bad thank you okay when sales are low, that is when I actually get more, how do I put it? More driven. That's when I start to. You're not an island. Having a good product is not enough. But if you're not putting it out there, if you're not telling people, I have a good product, it's going to sit, you're looking at it and it's looking at you. So when the sales are low, I change my strategy. I advertise. It's simple. You advertise, you find other ways to reach out. To, I mean, how many million people in Nigeria alone? So there's always somebody somewhere. And it doesn't always have to be online. If you try the online way, you also try the offline way. For someone like it's as simple as setting up a roll-up banner in a maternity ward, it's enough. So everybody's saying that would, at least if there are 15 people there, at least eight people would be interested. I don't have to be physically there, but my, my roll-up banner is telling you everything. And why maternity ward? Because that's the people I'm looking for. I, don't, I didn't set it up at the entrance of the hospital. I was specific to where I put it. So when sales are low, that's your best time to know that, okay, I need more people to hear about um, this, my business. So you go and you, you say it out. And I'm not a very salesy person. Like I don't always declare sales like that. So once in a while, I have a, um, I have a community out of Instagram, which is like the email marketing. I created an email marketing because whether I like to or not, Instagram is a broad platform. So if you're not careful one day to just go poof and you don't know, like how can you reach out to those people? So I have a community of over um, 6,000 emails email subscribers. So once in a while, I send them that email and give them a loyalty discount, VIP discount. Now, people in that community, because my people on my page know that I don't really run sales like that. And the only way you can always get a discount from me is if you join my um, email marketing program. That's why I got them. So I know that no matter what happens in my life, I have over 6,000 people who have bought a product from me before, not just signing up. These are people that have bought from me before who can always want to at least buy one or two things from me. So on those days, sales are low, you push harder. Okay, thank you so much for answering that question. One of the things that I got on the days that sales are low, push harder, share tips, and just keep giving back to your community. Thank you. So this last question that I want to ask is, you've built a very reputable brand for yourself and even your collaboration and partnership, like you've partnered with affluential people. So one of the things that we want to, I want to learn and ask is, how were you able to do that? Was it like monetary value or was it a stake in the business or is it influencer marketing? Or was it just because they trust and like your brand, that's why they're always your loudspeaker? Because I'm saying this because when I go to one Acres page, I'm seeing reshape me, Trisha B's, Ninja Brand Chic, they are them, like so many people, I can't even name their names. You've done so, so well, like well done. So how, how were you able to maneuver that? How were you able to hack and crack that code? Because I know that, yes, there will be money involved, but I'm sure that for some of them, it might be really hard 
are for there. Honestly, just like do you can you like share ideas and tips on how you were able to reach out to those kind of people? Thank you. Oh, that's a very good question. <laughs> a very good question. Now, I always say in business, you have to spend money to make money. That's the rule of business. You have to spend money to make money. So most of these people you mentioned, like you said are people that I have not even paid. But if you remember my number five, I said create relationships. So sometimes showing up on their own pages and commenting, oh, once they buy, if they bring out a product out there, you buy, you're their first customer. You have to give, you have to give what you want back. You understand? You have to give what you want. If you want this person, it's also some people call it the notice me strategy you understand if i'm consistently commenting on your page if i'm consistently in your dm responding to your stories do this do that you want to be like one day be like ah, let me check this girl's page there. she's always everywhere so most of the influencers actually genuinely customers they buy it like they bought the product by themselves and when they do i don't hound them for a shout out i don't go there and say oh please now or i i see some brands share Oh, this person bought from me, this person is in my, I don't do that. I allow you to do it yourself. My first ever blow, like, let me put it like that, was from an influencer then, she's an OAP. I would always, I would, can't tell my success story without her. Okay, and this, as a brand owner, you have to work with your instincts. Not everything is to be paid for, but sometimes you have to know when to give a product for free, and then sometimes you should know when to collect your money. And if you're giving it for free, let them know, okay, please, I didn't beg you for it, you're doing it, but let them know that please, if you have time, if you can help me um, put it out there and leave them, leave them to do it. Everybody has a conscience. So if you're always wanting me, I'll be like, guy, okay, how much is it? Let me pay for it so that you leave me, you know, you understand? So when she came to my game to buy some things, at that time, I was just starting the handmade when we skinapa. It had a different fabric then, which made it thicker. So a lot of people were like, ah, it's too thick because it was not looking like the usual wish trainers we have. So I got discouraged on my own end. So I had just one left. And that one, of course, is a handmade. We make it according to your size. You give us your measurements and you make it. So somebody already ordered. And back then I was just starting. So I always made the mistake of you can pay me after I make it. So after that experience, I actually said, say, no, it's paid before service. So I finished making this and I reached out to him. I was like, oh, my. And I said, hey, she changed her mind. She has done this. So I felt bad. I just left to say, and she came to buy, I looked at her, I know her, her profile, so I was like, oh, she looks like that. She's almost the same size as that woman, I'm sure it will fit. So I just put it in her parcel, you know, I just put it there in her parcel. And when she got it, two months later is when she actually put it out there to her followers. You understand? So if I, I didn't talk to her again after that period, she, when she told me, oh, I've got to my parcel, I saw the frigate, what's it about? I explained to her, oh, it's a handmade, I made it myself, this, that, that. She was like, okay, that was it. I didn't ask anything again, but she did it on her own. So if I didn't work with that instant, if I didn't put that parcel in her order, that product in her parcel, sorry, maybe I wouldn't be here, who knows? I don't know because, I mean, I went from selling just 20, it took me over, over two months man, to sell 20 pieces. And with just that shout out alone, I know I sold over 200 pieces. I actually had to bring in more tailors. <laughs> you know, 200 pieces in one week, about one week. So, um, Along the line, when you're associated with, affiliated with a certain people, people in their corner would also want to be affiliated with you. It's simple. Okay, like now you, you mentioned seeing me on Manika's page. Manika's friends has also come to buy. It's just natural mathematics. If you see me on, if I, if I, if I, if you, Sarah, buys from me, everybody in Bumper would buy from me. That's why I said, it's all about pyramid marketing. <laughs> it's all about pyramid marketing. One person, would always bring you five people, whether you like it or not. One person would always bring you five people. So sometimes you have to pay for it. The ones you can pay for, but don't go and break the bank to pay for anything. If you cannot afford it, wait till you can afford it and do your normal marketing. I mean, for my own kind of business, I'm being my own brand ambassador was like the best thing. But I said bringing in other people. You know, so that's basically, I hope I answered your question. Thank you so much. Uh, oh, I'm yeah. going to take another question from Sarah. Okay. No, not your own, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Good afternoon. Uh, 
Okay, I'm not sure she's still here. We have one more question from Dummy. Oh, she's here. Hi, sir. Sarah, I think your network might be bad, so you can drop your question in the chat box and we'll respond. There's one last question from Dami. This is the last question we'll be able to take today. Hello. Hi, Hello. Dami. Hello. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. That's Sarah, yeah, not Dami. Evening. Good evening. Okay, no, no, no. Sarah. Okay. Yeah, good evening. Good evening. Yeah, nice meeting you, Matilda. Same here, Sarah. Yeah, God bless you. Thank you. Yeah, I want to ask a question. I'm a market, um, I'm into networker, networking. Okay. How can I how can I market my product as a networker? As a network marketer. Uh, yes. I mean, it depends on number one, depends on what you're marketing. Like, can you tell me like brief description okay, of what like, you're marketing? I, I, I market uh I'm into a bottling that is an apps, which is called Jiximo. Is it uh, okay, is so, I think more, I didn't get the yeah. first one? You're into bottling. Do you, do you is it bottling. like a service or a product? Is a product. Okay, bottling. Bottling, that is, it's called Jiximo Aba Curative uh, Drink. Okay, it's a drink. Okay. So it's a okay. drink. How can I market it out there? How can I do what you just display, uh, what you just mentioned to us this evening? Okay. Um, I don't know what Jiximo does. I don't know what kind of product it does. Okay, Jiximo does, does everything. Does cure everything. There's nothing that Jiximo does not cure. Okay, we now call it, call it Boboniche. That's what Biroba called it, call it Boboniche. Okay. okay. So how can I put it in the in the market to at least my audience? Hmm. I'm sure I'm guessing we do more of um, WhatsApp marketing, right? Okay. I'm asking, do you do more of WhatsApp marketing? Yeah, I do, do I do more of mar uh, WhatsApp marketing. Yeah, I do I do that. Okay, now I go to we, Facebook too. Yes, you use Facebook too. Now, for me to use um, that product, I would like to, as in, I would want to see people it has worked for. I would like to see real life testimonials, real life reviews. Now, okay. sometimes you might pick out somebody from your audience. You might be like, I'm looking for so so and so person who has this, this, this. You list the things you know, just more kills. Who is willing okay. to be, to like, like a um, labrat, let me use the word labrat somehow. But okay. you get my point. So you give this person this product for free in exchange for your review. Now you're going to make it public there because a lot of people want to, you know, everybody will, will see that this person came from the comment section. You can pick them from the comments by yourself and you're going to send the product to them for free. Oh. So like I said, in business, you don't sell all the time. Sometimes you have to be able to, you know, lose some to win some. So when this mm. person comes on, on board and gives their own results and everything. If it's something that needs a uh, before and after in test results, like this is what my result was reading before Jiximo and this is what is reading now. People know that, okay, okay this person come on board, they are seeing it with their two eyes. A lot of people will now be able to see, okay, this is, um, this thing works. And for me, okay. I, let me use myself as an example. My product, my brand does weight loss. I said, I, I entered weight loss more towards the end of um, 2020. And so in order to achieve this, I had to be the person to show them. I added weight to them button 20 and they've watched mm -hmm. me use it. They've seen me mm -hmm. use my product, they've seen me use, use it. Now they're even begging me to stop, so it, uh, it's okay. But now that's all I needed to push this new product. I being the person to show them, this is how you can remember me being like this, this is me now, you understand? So sometimes people want to see, in marketing, those, those kind of things, we want to see it, work. we want to see what you're talking about, we want to see what you're selling, we want to see how it, how it works. I tell people, like, you're, you're your brand first. You can't come to tell me um, you have something that will make me become a billionaire, and I look at you from head to toe, and you look like you need me mm -hmm. to give you transport. Mm -hmm. 
Now, you can't tell me you're selling organic, glowing, seven days whitening, and I look at you and you're burnt all over. Mm. I wouldn't want to buy from you. Then you yeah. can't tell me you're selling luxury hair and you're carrying a sponge. It would be hair you're carrying. I automatically assume that that is your product that you're carrying. All Do you right. understand? You, understand. Uh, you yourself, for your product, if you have personal ailments or health issues that this product has helped you with and you can prove it, maybe with mm. a doctor's report or something, it's good to put it out there. It's good to put it out there. Like when I told people that, oh, my product works for Lumba Corset and everything, Luckily, somebody who just had an accident and couldn't work well was using clutches, decided to use it for that. So when she did, she saw that she was able to move for a few minutes without it. And she sent me the review and everything. I put it out there. A lot of people were like, oh, this product goes beyond exactly, exactly what I'm saying. So if it's something you know you can push, you push. If not, you have to like find somebody who would be willing to do it for you. All right. OK. Thanks so much. Thank I've you. got seen the message. Thanks so, so much. God bless you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, Thank bye. you so much. Uh, we'll take our last question now. Dami. Is Dami still here? Okay, I don't think she's here anymore. So I just want to thank you very, very much for sharing all of these helpful things with us this evening. I've learned a lot and I know everybody here has learned a lot. So for everybody here, the recording of this session will be on YouTube first thing on Monday morning. We're having more events to talk about community building and what we're doing at Bumper this week. Uh, the first one is on Tuesday. That will happen on um, Twitter, Twitter Spaces. And we're having someone from the Chess and Slums team. So I'm sure you don't want to miss that. She's going to tell us how she builds the Chess and Slum community. And it's going to be a really great one. Then on Thursday, we're having Bumper Town Hall meeting where we're going to tell you all the things that are happening with Bumper, the things to look forward to, take your complaints and just interact with the team generally. So I want to thank you once again for coming to this event. Thank you so much, Matilda. Thank you everybody thank for joining you. us. I know thank there are a million so things we could have been doing this weekend, but you came here. So thank you so much. Oh, at least <laughs> I know people. I also gained the two way thing. Yeah. Again, there's a lot of people now know my brand and what it stands for. So, thank you thank so you much so for much. trusting me to deliver and God bless you. Thank you so much. So, bye guys. Have a great evening. Oh, someone in the comments says she wants a reshaped shirt. Oh, you might have sent a DM for that. I don't know about that. <laughs> thank you guys. Bye, everybody.